So, so we get back to a glorious presenter on tour de la thème de la gloire. Et puis Michael Molly qui va nous parler de OpenParliament.ca. Merci beaucoup. Euh, avant de commencer, quelque chose. Euh, quelque chose euh, ben, euh, pour, pour être euh, Montréal style, je vais parler plutôt en anglais parce que euh, je fais moins de fautes en anglais. Euh, mais n'hésitez pas à de demander des questions en français et euh, je vais peut-être euh, mettre quelques phrases en français parce que euh, ben, je suis un peu gêné que le site que je vais te présenter, c'est des lignes anglophones. anglophone. Euh, et bien sûr, euh, je suis amateur de politique, donc euh, je veux être comme Justin Trudeau. Et, euh, changer languages in the middle of my phrase. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and number two is that uh, this is going to be relatively low on, on code in Python in terms of what I'm going to tell you, uh, mostly because I'm sort of presenting uh, a website where, um, I mean, most of it is fairly standard, the topics to go into about coding, like stuff like web scraping, APIs, would themselves take up 20 minutes, but don't hesitate to ask me, uh, ask me questions about tech stuff. And I think there's um, a lot of kinship between, between Python and the stuff I'm going to be talking about. Uh, since for me, what, what you know, I, I like so much about Python, what brought me to Python was um, the ability to go from an idea in your head to, to sort of to code that's, that's clear and executable and you can play with really quickly. Um, the the read about print, the shell, is definitely you know, my, my favorite part of working with Python. Most of my coding time is, is probably spent in I Python. Um, and that, that's sort of the, the spirit which with the, I think oh, you can approach a lot of these projects. Um, so this is about, about hacking government data, and I will mostly be repeating, by the way, what, uh, what John and Mike already said, but it's important so you can hear it twice. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so it starts off with uh, me being interested in the question of sort of what, what, is my, what has my MP uh, been, been saying lately? And this is called the Hansen, this document. It's uh, something that's been published uh, in Canada since the 19th century, in Britain for longer. It's the daily transcripts of everything that goes on in the House of Commons. Uh, there's a whole b bunch of crazy traditions around it. Uh, it's been cranked out for all these years. It's been online for decades. The problem is it exists as one very, very long document uh, per day, which you have to have pretty fierce stomach to read through the whole thing. Um, so I was trying to answer these simple questions about it, and with this document, I could. Uh, you just, you know, you're, you're inundated with data. Uh, so as sort of an a annoyed engineer, thought, this should be easier. I want to build a shell to this. Um, so uh, that's what I did. Oh, can I not switch to Yes. Um, so that's what I did. Um, one minute. I went and scraped those documents, which is you know, the standard process of web scraping, which is a lot, of, a lot of HTML parsing, a lot of gnarly regexes, a lot of swearing to parse structured data out of the fact that, okay, this is, a, this is an H2 in 14 point text. That means it's obviously the name of an MP from Manitoba, those sorts of things. Is that SQL kicker? Oh, yeah, comment plus. Comment plus? Oh, hi, that's good. Good times. So, you can do things like, this is Thomas Mulcair, my MP, if I want to know uh, how many times did he, uh, did he vote against his party uh, in, in, uh, in the last while. Oh, sorry, just, I want dissent equals true. And he is never. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, this is standard for Canadian MPs, I might talk more about that later. Or if I want to take uh, someone like our uh, wonderful Minister of Immigration, Jason Kenney, took government property. Tom was not happy. Um, so that's the sort of thing which maybe maybe this is me nerding out, but being able to do that with, with the data about politics, that's the sort of thing that gets me really excited. And that's sort of the spirit which I'm going to do my best to, to, to talk about here. Um, so what I did uh, with that data as soon as I did that uh, was built a quick app where you enter a word, any word you want, and you 
won't get a graph of uh, <laughs> when it's been spoken in the House of Commons. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the project which I was like, yes, I need to do this, and spent two weeks working on this. But uh, after I'd done that and assembled this really big database in behind, I figured I should, I should probably see if I could do something uh, a little bit more useful. And I built a site called Open Parliament Today, which, uh, openparliament.ca, which is what I'm here to plug today. Uh, but it is a site which tries to make it easier for you to keep tabs on Parliament. Um, so the core of the site is probably uh, the politician page. Uh, this is all Python, by the way, and it's all open source. It's on GitHub. Uh, please contribute. Um, <laughs> uh, so the idea is, uh, instead of going through these long documents, it's to organize around the questions people have, like, what is my MP been up to? Uh, so if you live in Sage's Dash, your MP is Lauren Liu. Lauren Liu. <coughs> Lauren Liu. And uh, so aggregates things like, you know, what, what they've said in Parliament, mentions in the media, Twitter posts, legislation introduced, votes, uh, a few other things. Uh, you can sign up to get email alerts when they speak, their feeds, contact information. You can look through votes, you can look through bills. There's many various things to do, which I, I encourage you to explore on your own. Um, I'm gonna go pretty quickly through plugging the site, but I'll go through a couple other things it does. Oh yeah, you, you could do a lot of fun data analysis. <laughs> so this is one particular day in Parliament uh, hmm. from from, uh, from last fall. Everyone knows what the word prorogation means. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all sorts of fun data analysis can do. Uh, oh, here's here's a good one. Uh, this takes the uh, the words uh, from Parliament and runs it through an algorithm to find instances where the sentences match the syllabic pattern of haiku. Five syllables. <laughs> <laughs> This is because I went to the cheese shop and there was a package called Haiku Fighter. <laughs> um, and, and so, yeah, there's, there's a whole site with, with thousands of these. And then another big part of it is trying to make it so that this data is uh, reusable and shared so that other people also have access to build their own things on top of them. Uh, so there's a bare bones API, which I'm working on improving now. There's also a tool which uh, I just finished uh, called Alphys. Uh, after the first librarian of Parliament. So, um, slight detour. So, this, this stuff is based on scraped data. On the back end, Parliament, it was actually XML for years. They, of course, wouldn't give it to me, but it was the XML on their back end. They finally did release some of that XML. So, belated clap for. Uh, problem is, it is, it's in this uh, undocumented, fairly obscure schema with like 150 different tags. Um, so, I released, I, I'm just about to release a tool which. Uh, takes that and converts it into its um, actually HTML5, very semantic HTML5, which is designed for web developers to be to be able to reuse it. So it's a, a standalone Python tool where you do Alpheus, give me today's proceedings of Parliament, and it gives it to you in this um, HTML5 format. And getting data out there, that means that other people have taken that data and built tools on top of it. Uh, so here's this is a guy called uh, Clayton Grassick in Montreal. Uh, so you paste in some text, and it does uh, some language processing to see based on those words. Uh, MPs of which party are more likely to say it. <laughs> uh, so if you look in there, the Zen of Python is NDP. Oh. <laughs> uh, so these, are, these, are, these are words which, so the blue are the words so that cool. are most unique to the Conservative Party. Uh, and the orange are the words that are most unique to the NDP. This is data from about a year ago. <laughs> so now the Conservatives are talking about, you know, tenured predators and tackling without dithering. Whereas, um, <laughs> yeah, all I'm saying is if, if the NDP changed their lame, name to the Lesbian Shipbuilding Insurance, there's a couple other fun tools on the site if you, if you go to openparliament.ca, which any network connections is so. There's one like, really artsy one which has words going in all directions um, and only occasionally works, but I won't show that now. Um, so that's what I do. Um, but my goal here is not just to show off, um, it's to get you to see how fun and worthwhile these, these kind of projects are. And um, uh, Mike and John did, did a great job of that already. Um, and I'll try and talk about a few different ways that um, data hacks can, can be interesting in, in, in doing really useful stuff. Uh, so one of the ways that, that hacking projects can add value to data is by organizing things around, around location. Um, so quick set, okay, this is, this is out, of, out of England. A uh, bunch, of, bunch of hackers decided to print out newspapers, except based on data for a particular person's postcode. You type in your postcode, they print out a paper for you with all sorts of statistics about your neighborhood. And suddenly, this, these sort of drab statistics become really interesting. Uh, same kind of example, um, maybe this, this, these slides are from uh, sort of 
less tech audience talk, and, and they were all amazed. But do Python guys know every block? Does no, okay, so not, not too many. So every block is say Adrian Holovaty, he's uh, also the guy who wrote Django, uh, long time, long time Pythonista. Um, but this is, this is his site. What it does is organizes all sorts of news around your address. Uh, I used to, it's only in the States. I used to live in New York. This is my old address. And it takes all sorts of stuff that would otherwise be pretty drab and makes it really interesting because it's happening, you know, um, so you know, here are building permit applications. Really boring, except when it's next door. The, this, the properties that my neighbors are selling. Uh, oh, I, I know that statue, that's right by me. And oh, Alicia Silverstone is gonna be filming a movie on, on the corner right beside me. Uh, crimes next door, and apparently there was a business license awarded to the Jenkins Institute of <laughs> So, <laughs> I obviously moved away from <laughs> uh, But it takes all this stuff, which is, you know, this is the, the stuff of municipal records which nobody ever looks at. And by putting it online, by organizing it around your postal code, it becomes a really useful tool for organizing yourself and becoming more involved in local politics. Uh, that sort of way, um, by filtering things, um, it's a, these sorts of tools can help you identify what matters in a data set and do things with it. Uh, so a couple of really quick examples. Um, this is a, from ProPublica. They're uh, an American uh, sort of, uh, journalism organization. Uh, they're taking s uh, standard school data, both the states, but using it to make a point about how inequality affects uh, the courses that are available, uh, the competence of teachers in the schools. It's taking on the statistics, organizing with a point of view, saying you could compare your local school, it's relevant to you, with things nearby and in higher, lower poverty areas. Tell us tips about that you know about context for your local people. Share this with other people. That takes data and allows you to, to drive change with it. Um, fantastic Montreal project. I've mostly been skipping them because Mike and John talked about it. Um, by uh, James McKinney, who is like Montreal's open data superstar, though sadly a um, <laughs> uh, This is a recent project for the Gazette, which takes the uh, transcripts of the the, the, Royale, the, the the I'm not sure which council, but they're these long PDFs. Scrapes the PDFs to find out only the bits where they talk about approving a contract, and puts all that in a database, so you can just see these are the contracts which uh, which the city is sort of area deep in, in the weekly minutes and puts them into a nicely searchable database uh, with, with the dollar amount, the company, the classifications. Um, and again, by saying, okay, here's this tons of data. We think that these contracts are what matter we should be paying attention to. Makes this really draft data useful. Uh, this is another site which I made uh, with, uh, with a guy called Larry Frenchman. Um, it takes um, information on, on, uh, from election sites and repurposes them to answer the really quick question, which is, here's my address. Where do I go to vote for the municipal election? And it's just a page with one form, which is what's your address, and it takes you to a map and tells you where to vote, uh, which is something that the vast majority of actual elections bodies have not yet figured out. <laughs> I'm really hoping they will, but again, by saying, this is what you care about, I'll show it to you, there's, there's real use in that. Um, another example, uh, so this is a site out of Vancouver. Uh, in Vancouver, the garbage collection schedule is really bizarre. Uh, so it's, it's every week, except every time there's a holiday, there's no garbage collection, and they shift everything forward by days. <laughs> um, so a guy called, called Luke Kloss in Vancouver said, this is really hard to keep track. I'm gonna scrape this data, I'm gonna build an app to give you reminders of, uh, of when to pick up your data. Something simple, something useful. But for me, what's really interesting about that is that this is an, this is an application that's made by one guy who's saying, I'm having a problem with this, here's something I can do to make it more useful. We all know what open source software is. We're all familiar with how this makes pretty much all of our lives better. All the open source projects we use it every day start from that sort of uh, that sort of itch to scratch. For me, one of the great potentials of open data is having an open source civic life, where we're able to say, here's here's a way that I can make the civic life in my neighborhood better using using the skills that I have. So that's Tim Berners-Lee over there, father of the web, and who is mainly campaigning for open data these days. That's his that's his cause right now. He's uh, in charge of data.gov in the UK, um, and I think there's there's a real connection between the openness of the web. You know, an open civic structure. Um, so, quick stuff <coughs> on um, uh, lessons that uh, sort of th things I like about some of these uh, some of these sites, and, and I encourage you to keep in mind if I'm building similar projects. Um, start with a question. Start with something that people are going to be asking, and that you can answer. Um, have opinions with with uh, with this data if you're going to start a project. Say this is what I think matters. Uh, I'm not going to show you just every possible bit of data you can, you can explore. I'm going to show you something which I think will be useful to you. I'm going to put my own spin on things. 
Um, one of the keys to open data is let other people do their own thing uh, with what you have. Uh, release, you know, build a site on it, but build an API, release a data dump. Make sure that other developers can, can have their own points of view on top of that. Um, give things a URL. If you look at government sites, the URL structure is among the worst things. Uh, it's, it's always like index.asp question mark long base 64 string. Um, <laughs> what, what, what makes the web the web is that you can share pointers to resources. You know, you can say, hey, I want to share something my MP said in Parliament. That is much, much easier with my site because there's one URL you can, you can post to your friends. Um, and above all, there's a real opportunity for, for fun here. Um, people are incredibly happy to see you know, this, this civic data come with a bit of personality on top of it. You know, I know Stéphane Guidoin, who launched uh, Zone Cone uh, pretty recently, uh, has gotten so much thank you email, and, and I've gotten a whole bunch too, just saying, you know, thank you so much for not being an East Elle de For saying, you know, we realize, you know, I'm a citizen, I realize how much pain there is in here. We're, we're in this together, I'm gonna put some personality in um, I'm running much shorter on time than I thought, so I will skip even so most of the techie stuff. But uh, short bits here, Doug's beautiful soup, it's nice mostly, but I like it's much better. Um, Mechanize is great, though the Perl version is better, but still, that's, uh, Mechanize is a, a web scraping library uh, that essentially emulates a browser. It can be really useful for uh, uh, trickier scraping things if you have to scrape an ASP.NET site, which is unfortunately quite frequent. Um, I am going to totally skip linked data uh, because that is a whole barrel of stuff. Um, so a few tech lessons in building projects like this. Um, of course, unit tests are, 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 are a good thing always, but you need to run tests, uh, sanity checks all the time on the outputs of your scrapers um, if, if you're trying to scrape data. Uh, unit tests are, will only go so far as sort of telling you when there's been regressions. What happens all the time is that there'll be some sort of slight change in data. Uh, the only way I've found to deal with this is building in a lot of proper exceptions on which data sort of coding in, these, these are the aspects of a successful, uh, uh, of, of what this data is like successful the most. Um, assume that the data that you're going to get in is full of errors. Just assume it from the get-go, uh, you know, deal with that in your application. Vast data sets always have tons of mistakes in them. Uh, you can't go insane or expect a like, perfectly formed XML in, in all of your inputs. Um, Use big cache layers, uh, but I've found that it's best to have those separate from the application. Uh, so these sorts of sites often get big spikes in traffic with media attention. Uh, but the very nice thing is that you often can um, use plain old HTTP caching, where you say this URL, a cache is valid for you know, 60 minutes. Uh, and for me, that's been very easily accomplished by using sort of third-party cache layers, things like Varnished, varnish, excuse me. Um, and Having admin tools for yourself to have access to the data uh, so that you, you can um, not just see a public interface, but you can dig around it yourself, like the shell I showed you at the beginning. Uh, to me, that's, that's one of the best the, the, the ways to, to develop new features, to develop new useful things, is to have my own, my own lens into it. Um, so uh, I've mostly avoided talking about open data so far. Um, open data being the idea that governments will help you. Um, because that's a, a little bit of a hurdle to jump. Uh, there's groups like Maria Lubea that have done fantastic things in that area. Um, but often, if you're trying to build projects like this, you'll be faced with a great deal of indifference uh, from government if you're trying to do it. Um, the biggest lesson I have there is ask for uh, forgiveness rather than permission. Um, that said, there will be, there, it, it's a slow trajectory uh, provincial level, at the federal level, at the municipal level. Um, you are, government is slowly getting better and better and realizing that there's a lot of potential in uh, helping out people to, to build tools like this. Um, so as usual, I figured I could talk much quicker uh, than, than I actually do when I already speak pretty fast. Um, so I'll, I'll wrap things up with a chance to make questions. Um, but the, the main message I, I, I want to communicate with you if I can is that this stuff is really fun. Um, and there's a whole lot of opportunity to build to build tools that are interesting and useful and indeed a lot of fun. And uh, I hope I hope to see a lot more hacking projects coming out of the Kuwait Montreal. Uh, thanks very much.
demander des questions, je pense. Ah, ou, voilà. un, un, question, un, un ou deux questions, s'il y en a. Je ne sais pas. Tu as parlé que Open Ordinance faisait du language processing. Pardon, je ne peux pas t'entendre. Tu as dit qu'avec Open Ordinance, tu faisais du language processing. Uh, language processing. Uh, language processing, ça veut dire plusieurs choses. Je ne fais pas, pas vraiment trop, pas, pas, pas être trop compliqué. Okay. C'est uh, simple Bayesian stats. Uh, uh, no. uh, ben, J'utilise NLTK pour des, des choses très très petites ici et là. J'ai déjà euh, travaillé avec ça. Il y en a plein de choses à faire, mais je n'ai pas fait grand chose pour l'instant avec ça. Merci beaucoup.